the guest of honor today, Mr. Satish Chandra, Tapu store manager. Um, Manager, Mr. Edward Christie, um, Mr. O'Connor, thank you very much for the very, very warm welcome. First of all, I must thank all the beautiful children of Singatoka Pan Methodist Kindergarten to be present here today. Good morning, children. Wow, all the beautiful, gorgeous little girls and the prince and the princesses, I love you all. And of course, the parents and families, friends of media, ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Bula, Namaste, Assalamu Alaikum, and a very, very good morning once again to each and every one of you. You all are looking so beautiful this morning, and out here in Singatoka, the morning is beautiful. I know you had a good rainfall, uh, I think, for the past three days, much needed in the Western Division. Uh, consider that as uh, God's blessing. I'm actually very, very, very happy to be with you all. And to all the little uh, beautiful princes and princesses, I must say that you are the center of attention in the school today. You are the stars. The little twinkle stars, all our beautiful children, they are God's blessings. And kids, children, do you know that your parents have prepared you for today and with their love and interest at heart? Well, I know it. They have prepared their children for today and they are preparing them for tomorrow and for future. I am indeed honored and privileged to be part of this celebration, the annual graduation and awards giving ceremony of the Singatoka Methodist Kindergarten. The energy in this hall is because of the joyful spirits in the air, for you children are a treasure to all of us. I wish to congratulate the school management and staff for successfully running the early childhood education program at this kindergarten for it is a key component of early childhood development. Before I uh, move any further or say anything else, I must thank uh, Mr. Arvind History. Actually, he was the one who invited me to this ceremony today. So thank you, Mr. Arvind History. The emotional, social, and physical development of young children has a direct effect on the overall development and on the adult they will become. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe very much that you can change a young mindset, but you cannot, it's difficult to change an adult mindset. That is why, I mean, the basic foundation of our children must be very, very, very strong. If the foundation is strong, no wisdom can shake them. Even if you build a house, you need to have a strong foundation. And this is the same with our children. We have to give it a holistic approach, how we manage our children, how we bring them up, what we teach them. I believe every person or every child needs to be given a holistic approach towards personal development. Mentally, physically, how you feed them, what you feed them. Spiritually, which here I believe in the church, the reverend and the team are doing a wonderful job. We need to develop spiritually as well. Not only mentally, physically, socially, environmentally, but spiritually as well, financially as well. So, every aspect of human development and the end result is the holistic approach to personal development. 
which I believe every parent, every teacher is trying to do their best to give this to our children. The need to invest in every young child is important and a smart one for it affects their future well-being. And sure enough, education is fundamental to development and growth. Everybody knows that. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers, foundational skills acquired early in childhood make possible a lifetime of learning. The traditional view of education as starting in primary school takes up that challenge too late. The science of brain development shows that learning needs to be encouraged early and very often, both inside and outside of the formal schooling system. In the primary years, quality teaching is essential to give students the foundational literacy and numeracy skills on which lifelong learning depends. Parents, you are probably wondering where the years have gone. As you marvel at your child's accomplishments, it doesn't seem that long ago that these youngsters we honor today were toddling off. They were cradling in your arms holding your fingers. But today, look at them. Stand on their two feet. Though they are still children, but they are growing fast. Sometimes we look at our children and wish, wish, wish they go back a few years back so that we can, you know, relive all those moments, the joyful moments. I think for parents, it is the most wonderful time of their life when they see their children grow from the cradle into her arms, holding your fingers and then walking on their own. Isn't it a wonderful experience? All the months here should know. And sometimes you look back at the pictures which you have in your albums, say, oh, my beautiful child. Now, he's grown, he's growing. Yes, and you have many, many, many dreams for them. To see them grow, well educated, a good human being later in life, you know, making their parents proud. That is a parent's dream. Every parent, I also dreamt of that. Now the children are grown up, studied well, married, and enjoying their life and contributing you know, to the society. I think that's how we want to uh, mentor our children. When a child first started kindergarten, there was much separation anxiety. Moms would sometimes stay, I mean, outside the doors whole day. I mean, seeing if their child is safe in the school when they bring them to kindergarten. Now, the teachers are so smart, I tell you. They, 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 I don't know whether they need so much of shepherding. But, you know, in our days, I remember, you know, moms used to, you know, stand beside the door waiting. The child would cry, okay, I'm going to go home. I want to play. And now these kids are like more ingenious. <laughs> they are so brilliant. They are so smart. And and here when I was talking to the teachers in the morning and the managers, and I learned that there are hundred students here at Singatoka uh, Prem Methodist Kindergarten. I was amazed. I am amazed. Actually, looking at the huge number of attendants in Kindi, I think. Um, uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, one of the largest numbers of kindergartners I have uh, heard of any school having. I think uh, you deserve a round of applause. I mean, really, this is wonderful. <laughs> like I was saying in the beginning, yes, uh, you send your child away. You are thinking whole day. There's much anxiety whether he'll be all right in school, whether he'll make friends in school, whether he will have his lunch or uh, meals, or whether he'll be crying, what's he doing in the school, and how old the mom is thinking about. And as you go on, as you go on, you know they are safe, they are sound. They are well looked after, they're very uh, diligent teachers here. I believe there are four of them here, managing the 100 students in this school. The beginning of a new school year is like that for children and for parents alike. I wish to remind us today that we need to give the best possible opportunities to our children and that means a lot of love and affection and a lot of care and attention to the children. For the teachers,
The beginning of the school year was a time of building trust with the children and with their parents alike. It was a time of building relationships together and creating a team with one shared goal, providing every child with what they needed to develop and grow as kindergartners. And I know the teachers and the parents, you have put in your efforts equally. That trust was built. Relationships and teams were created. You all moved through the year as a team. Growing and learning and building a foundation your children will bring with them to Thailand school. And now it is the end of the school year. It is time for these children to move on, leaving their teachers with separation anxiety again. I know you have built a strong relationship with your students, with your children. You mentor them, you love them like your very own. And when they move on to primary school, I know the teachers will going to miss them. They're going to remember, I know one thing you remember in all your lifetime is your, your young days. I mean, look, at, look, look back in your life. There are so many things we forget at one point in time or the other, but you don't forget your childhood. What happened in your childhood, every person remembers. How was your kidney if you went to a kidney? I remember each and every moment of my kindy. And I know if you have go to a kindy, you will remember yours as well. And likewise, these children will remember every moment they have spent in this friend Methodist kindergarten. They will grow, but the memories will be strong. They will not fade away. They will live with them forever. Whenever they will look back, they will remember the school, they will remember their teachers, they will remember their friends. They will remember the management. They remember everything. Who all contributed to their development? We all remember. And they will remember as well. I'm sure the staff of the school will miss these children more than we know. At this juncture, I wish to thank all the teachers. Thank you for your dedication to the children and their families. Thank you for your thoughtful planning and time invested in the lives of each and every one of these children. From the government's perspective, ladies and gentlemen, it is very much about the future of our country. As you can see, all the policies of government is focused on building the future of Fiji and when it comes to human resource, government's policies focus a lot on education in ensuring a highly educated Fijian society by making access to education easier. Whether it be through free bus fares, free textbooks, free tuition, or free meat bigs and meal for infant students in the school. My ministry has been given a budget increment under the Care Protection Allowance Program. This new fiscal year, whereby children below the age of 18 of low income families will get 15% more allowance to cater for their educational and basic needs. We as a government know that these are the children who run the country some 20 years from now. These children are our future. They are our leaders of tomorrow. We have to mentor them. That is why my Prime Minister's motto is leave no one behind. Leave no child behind. Every child needs to be educated. They will be our teachers. They will be our doctors. They will be our ministers. Who knows? They will become ministers, engineers, business owners, policy and military personnel. Therefore, the quality of their education and well-being is our absolute priority. I encourage all students to take good advantage of the opportunity to be educated. You have what many children around the world can only dream of. You are on the brink of opening a new chapter of your lives and primary education will bring you more knowledge and the ability to realize your dreams. I want to encourage each child to adapt good human values together with your school work and recreational activities. Stay kind, stay respectful, stay honest, and believe in yourselves. To parents, spend time with your children, no matter how old they are or how busy you are. You have to spend time with your children. In these days, every day you pick up a paper 
and you read about child abuse, child molestation, right? These are some people's mentality. We have to take good care of our children. We have to know what they are doing, where they are going, who they are going with. Please, all I can say is spend more time and understand them better and give all your love. They deserve to be loved and we do not want to take away their, their childhood from them. Let them enjoy their childhood at the same time. Your personal involvement will make a huge difference in your child's education, in their life overall. Your family time could nourish and moral teaching, spiritual guidance, cultural norms and heritage and essentially build a good family life foundation. This education will ensure that our children grow with mindsets that can cope with the challenges of this century. We have to make them strong as well. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it gives me immense pleasure to be here amongst you all today. And may I close to offer my heartfelt congratulations to all the graduates. I can see all these uh, lovely prizes sitting on the desk and the kids are eagerly awaiting for the graduation ceremony. So, once again, I close to offer my heartfelt congratulations to all graduates for success in their studies and wish you the very best in your career. Yes. Once again, thank you.